America locks up more of its people than any other country. One reason is mandatory sentences. Mandatory minimum jail sentences are why Lawrence and Lamont Garrison spent more than a decade in jail. They were about to graduate from college when the FBI raided their home. They slammed my brother on the ground, slammed me on the ground, put us in handcuffs, and then they show us uh, a picture, do you know this guy? And it was the guy that fixed our car. The brothers were arrested for cocaine conspiracy. But they found no property, no money, no drugs. No drugs? Nope. Never no. sold any drugs? Nope. No. The brothers deny they'd even used drugs. But some dealers claimed they'd seen them dealing at a car repair shop. Why name you? I did business with him legitimate uh, repairing a car. The dealers, by pointing to these two, reduced their sentences. This is the snitch culture. They will lie just to make you look uh, more like a horrible person. Now, they made us to look like uh, um, some type of uh, drug lords. Why would they do that? Because mandatory minimums encourage crooks to implicate others. Then the prosecutor might lower your sentence. That gives me an incentive to make stuff up. Absolutely, and, and people do. It's a perfect example, a uh, perfect situation for someone to get themselves out of trouble. Snitch is not a bad word in my vocabulary. Snitch is a good word. That's how the, you know, Criminals, murderers, drug dealers, they don't deal with the choir boys. But he has an incentive to make something up about oh, somebody. Oh, but I can always, you can find that out. I gotta know when somebody's lying. Lise Wheel became a prosecutor right after law school. She's jailed smugglers, drug dealers, even a few hitmen. Most of you prosecutors like these mandatory yes. minimums. Why? It's more control for the prosecutor. And less control for a judge. The judge's hands are completely tied when there's a mandatory minimum. No matter the mitigating circumstances, no matter the unique circumstances of the crime or the victim or the defendant, nothing matters. The judge can't do anything? He can't say, this is nuts? No. Judges, they complain about this all the time. They apologize to defendants. They say, I'm sorry I have to do this, but I can't do anything else. A judge apologized to Scott Earl. After Earl had back surgery, he got addicted to painkillers. Then he met a woman in a bar. She kept asking him to supply him with painkiller pills. He resisted it. She first. was working for the cops. He didn't know at the time. He never sold any pills, but set up meetings where she could get pills, transferred them from Introduced one Introduced her to a supplier. Right. And for that, he was charged and given a 25-year mandatory minimum sentence. In the judge's apology, he said, this punishment does not fit the crime. With great reluctance, I will have to sentence the defendant to 25 years. Judges are begging the legislature to change this law. It's a harsh sentence. But that's sometimes what mandatory minimums mean. And if he pled with the prosecutor before they got to this stage, he wouldn't have been facing that. Oh, yes. Prosecutors want to avoid time-consuming trials. The threat of long jail time persuades accused people to plead guilty. I have had grown men on a drug bust just burst out in tears, weeping. Why? Mandatory minimums. If you plead guilty, you won't get the mandatory minimum. But if a defendant says, hey, look, I'm not a drug trafficker, I want to be able to tell a jury my side of the story. Prosecutors just drop the hammer. Why would a prosecutor be such a hard guy about it? Yeah, I'd like to be able to go to voters and say, look at my conviction rate. Look at these bad guys I've put in prison. Big bad John. Former prosecutor John Cornyn won his U.S. Senate seat after bragging about being tough on the bad guys. It's not a surprise that prosecutors are among the only people left to defend mandatory minimums because they do benefit directly from them. Some states have tougher minimums than others. I work in Florida. We have mandatory minimums for drug laws that are po probably the worst in the country. Uh, the toughest in the country. <laughs> the worst and the toughest. If you're caught with 22 pain pills without a prescription, you get an automatic three years in jail. 44 pills, seven years. Some of these laws just feel like a panicked response to fear of drugs. A panicked response? Yes. I don't think so. We're talking about hardcore dealers here. I'm sorry, when you're talking about somebody going out and trying to sell 350 22 pills. 22 pills. That's not somebody just using, John. That's somebody selling. But the Pain Management Institute says that could be less than a week's prescription. They're just low-level drug users. So what you have is addicts who are being picked up, charged with trafficking, and sent to prison for decades at a time. Like the Garrison brothers, though they weren't even drug users. They demanded a trial, but a jury believed the prosecution snitches. And you got almost 16 years, right. you got almost 20 years, right. and right. the snitch? Under three years. The message is, make something up about somebody. Exactly. Right. 
if proponents of mandatory minimums are correct that they reduce the crime rate, we should see two things. When they're imposed, the crime rate should go down. When they're repealed, the crime rate should go up. But that's not what we see. Michigan repealed its mandatory minimums more than 10 years ago. Since then, they've released thousands of drug offenders, they've saved billions of dollars, and the crime rate has fallen 20%.